beer in a bottle, in a bottle, there's beer down the spot, I want beer. A lot of you guys, I can see, will be very familiar with this, this opening passage. Propped up in the toilet, one hand on the wall, trying to get your fly down, trying not to fall. You piss, but miss, the porcelain, splashing on the floor. Telltale signs of brewer's aim as you stumble through the door. But Friday night is lads night, as if you had a bloody choice. Standing, laughing, drinking pints, talking with the boys. The ale flows, instinct slows, your mind begins to wander. Girls dancing, beery sex is what you start to ponder. So you catch a ride to the disco, try a change of scene. Keep, keep a nervous eye on the skinheads who are brutally venting spleen. You drink pints of fizzy bitter, from bendy plastic pots that's guaranteed to hurt your head and cover your ass with spots. <laughs> then snap, pop, quick as a flash, a nose as twisted gristle, a forehead covered in blood and snot, a tattoo of a thistle, a Glasgow kiss fueled by piss, a misplaced Celtic passion reminds me that it's time to leave before I get a ration. But me ride's gone without me. I'm left to walk on home. Seven drunken miles singing, give the bloody dog a bone. Clobbered by the sunrise in me hangover hell. A crash land in me bedroom, feeling distinctly unwell. Judgment defeated, mistakes are repeated. Week after month after year. Because you're weak in the head after beer. <laughs> Given that you're all at least uh, adopted tins of folks around here, I assume that you uh, completely understand the ethic behind Wakes Week, which is to get rat arse. And uh, this next little piece is my tribute to all those hard-working folks who make wells and put bunting up, make little paper flowers and hang them in front of their houses and all that lovely stuff. But, you know, there's another, there's another side to it. And I'm going to do this just for the hell of it, in the form of a rap song. What the heck? Yeah, we haven't had a rap yet. Oh, I need this. It's a very different rap song. <laughs> in the pubs, in the churches, in the houses on the hills, there's people getting almost getting drunk to the gills. They're throwing down bottles and pints and jills. They're running through the valleys, chasing sheep across the hills. Beltane fires kick sparks in the sky, but the lads from the villages could give a pig's eye. Bacchus is calling, the time has come to drink from his bowl and have some fun. But don't tell the vicar, because he wouldn't understand that people need to forage like the beasts of the land. Drink up your fill, have a skin full of ale. Go catch a badger and shake it by the tail. Spit on your palm, grab a handful of dirt, rub it in your hair and rip off your shirt. Howl at the moon, make an old bag swoon, then dance down the road to an ancient tune. We're drinking, we're dancing, we're chasing after girls, even mummy's boys are feeling like men of the world. Everybody shout on the count of three, you only rent your beer cause you've got to pee. The hills are alive and the valleys too, and the Derby Ram, he's a tupping as you. Beltane's dawn is fresh and wet, the fire is doused but the glow burns yet. We didn't come here for a bag of death, or for pork fried scratchings or to smell your breath. Didn't come wearing a bright blue cagoule, to wander round the hills like a bloody fool. I'm not going to the fair, no bloody fear didn't come for toffee apples or the atmosphere I only came for the beer we're only here for the beer we're only here for the beer <laughs> Engelbert Humperdinck did actually sing in Tidzer at the club 
And my band played here about uh, 1992, and we were told this. We were told, uh, well, well, you're going on the same stage as Engelbert Humperdinck, you know. Uh, something to be proud of, isn't it? Like, you know? I said, yeah, what do you think of Engelbert? They said, yeah, you're bloody rubbish, you were. <laughs> and in their book, you can go check it out. It should be an artifact. It should be, you know, it should be in the Tizel Museum. They got, you know, list, they have a little book, you know, being an affiliated club and all that. They have to keep check of everything. And uh, they got, you know, 1962 or whatever it was, Engelbert Humperdinck, Friday night, and uh, the equivalent of he sucked. Grass and rock, moss and bog, twisted hawthorn tree, wind and rain, take the strain, blowing to be free. Peakland Hills, where glory spells down every mountain side. Grass is greener, mutton leaner, natives dwell with pride. Each village holds their tribal rights, the boys all drink and fight. Railure in the daylight hours, deflowering by night. Pubs are filled, pine pods emptied. Old ladies dance with vicars. A few too many barley wines. They're pissing in their knickers. Bingo cards abandoned. The turn's about to start. The MC's interrupted by a lorry driver's fart. Lads at the bar start laughing as Humperdinck starts to sing. Grass and rock, moss and bug, twisted hawthorn thing. My heart is filled with Derbyshire's hills my blood is the river why my eye is the sky where the pewits do fly in sides will i hope i will die those viaducts hills and dark satan's mills my home from which i did depart through leaving i traveled and life has unraveled Few mysteries which dwelled in my heart. Her green breast beat with a sound so sweet. Her earth is soft neath the native sun's feet. I hope that I may find my way back to my mother some fine spring day. The valleys are deep and the ridges are high. The village I sleep Neath the blue velvet sky I wish I were there But instead I am here It's just an exile's dream In a bar drinking beer Oh tight will I love you You've done me no wrong My desire is to run out In deed and in song I was a wanderer by ways Which led to the highways Which I moved down too quickly To turn around in distance and time, I have travelled so far, but my heart lies in tides, well, not in this bar. Whiskey drowns my heartache, and beer cools my brow, but my soul keeps on yearning to be back there right now. Yeah, happy days, weren't they, those school days? Happy, happy, happy days. Yeah, did you really go to Kent's bank? Yeah, yeah. You? What's your name? Muir. Muir? You're Scottish, are you, or something, then? Ah, you were all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember me at Kent's bank, then? No. No, I don't remember you, either. As I was saying, when I was just 13, I got my first taste of a kick in the balls and a punch in the face. Phil Myers was the bastard who did that to me. He was scouring the playground for dinner money. Of course, I'm speaking of my formative years. All boys secondary modern, me sentence, five years. The first year, you fodder for bullies and queers. 
The second, they drag you around by your ears. The third year, you've had it, so you put up your fists. By the fourth, you're as bad as the rest. Girls were a premium in this camp of decay. Just photos in magazines. You could look if you'd pay. The bogs were like dungeons, ruled by dealers and queers. And if you could, you'd avoid them for your whole five years. But sometimes they'd get you for a duck in the bog. And if you fought back, you'd be beat like a dog. The pipes would rattle with that spine-chilling sound that some other poor bastard been stomped on the ground. All boys, secondary modern, greebos, skinheads and teds. All boys, secondary modern, victims of an empire long dead. <laughs> Let's move on to the next bit. When me dad... Naked, <laughs> will come down here with his, I should say, with the male voice mafia and sing a song for your entertainment pleasure this evening. Come on, Dad. Fakeful market on a Monday is a farmer's jamboree. The wheat sheep in his filter bus drinking whiskey in their tea. There's Paddy, Piggle, Tom and Stan are talking up a storm Bragging and wagging and telling tall tales about two-headed lambs they've born Oh! Whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea Forget the bloody whiskey, just put whiskey in my tea Whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea And don't forget the milk as well and whiskey in my tea. Now farmers come in Land Rovers from where the Sunday suits, and others come in cattle trucks with less care for their loops. They all go down the wheat sheaf and they drink as free can be. They sing and shout straight from the spout of the whiskey laden tea. Oh, whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea. Forget the bloody whiskey, just put whiskey in my tea. Whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea. And don't forget the milk as well as whiskey in my tea. Now. Farmers aren't the only ones enjoying this Monday spree For the pubs stay open all day long, not one of them close at three The streets are filled with revellers who roam from pub to pub But the favourite is the wheat sheaf with the whiskey, tea and grog Oh, whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea Forget the bloody whiskey, just put whiskey in my tea. Whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea. And don't forget the milk as well, and whiskey in my tea. Now the day must end, it's time to render fingers from the cup. But my <laughs> <laughs> but most obliged without a fight of the day, their final soap. Old Tom staggers out to the back, he really needs to pee, cause he's just put down his 15th cup of whiskey laden tea. Oh, whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea. Forget the bloody biscuits, just put whiskey in my tea. Oh, whiskey in my tea, boy, whiskey in my tea. And don't forget the milk as well as whiskey in my tea. That puts me in mind of something. And uh, Caroline could actually vouch for this, that, you know, if you're from Tideswell and for some reason you, you end up in Liverpool, you find yourself strolling down Lime Street of an evening, having a good time, bump into some scousers, and they say, where are you from then? And you say, Tideswell, they go, where? And you say, uh, oh, you know, it's near Buxton, they go, Buxton? 
Fuck a sheep shagging than aren't you? A woolly back. You got a woolly back. Yeah, that's what you are. You got a woolly back. What's a woolly back doing on Lime Street? That's what I want to know. And uh, speaking of woolly backs, we used to have these uh, trips from Tidesville to all manner of fascinating uh, destinations like uh, Blackpool, Blackpool, Blackpool and Blackpool. On board a woolly back coach trip to the Pleasure Beach, there was a bus trip Venus. She was a country peach. She was my big cousin Sheila, heck you should have seen her. They'd crawl the golden mile just for a chance to feel her hand in theirs in the tunnel of love. And if they're lucky, a kiss that's going to bump their blood. Bus trip Venus on a journey through Mars, shaking off the Klingons hanging outside the bars. Bus trip Venus in her jeans, so tight, she'd make a rocker go to church on a Saturday night. Bus trip Venus strolling down the prom, the boys on the bikes are shouting, show us your bum! The laughing policeman's nearly lost his mind, and the candy floss salesman's about to unwind. Bus trip Venus on the Golden Mile, cruising with her handmaids like the Queen of the Nile. Bus trip Venus, summer 1968. The doors are number one, but Sheila thinks Motown's great. And, uh, there was a fella I used to actually marvel at. I thought he was amazing. Mainly because he was the first teddy boy I ever got to know when I was about five. And I was fascinated by the inverted crosses on his earlobes and, you know, the various tattoos here and there. And most of all, the greasy hair, which I kind of feel like him tonight, actually. <laughs> Just someone lend me a comb, I could probably affect his look pretty well. Keith the Greasy Butcher used to smash up his cars, drinking and driving at 100 miles an hour. He'd roll into the driveway just like the devil's Ted, bleeding from his mouth and looking like the dead. Crawling from the wreckage, kicking at the door, he'd stagger three feet and fall flat on the floor. In the mornings, he'd awaken, cursing at the rain, stumble to the kitchen and grab a bottle for the pain. See, they threw him out the bull one night. He were drunk and starting fights, scaring all the women and stealing people's pints. Offended by their actions, his temper quick to rise. He staggered home for his shotgun, with destruction in his eyes. He grabbed the rifle, fell outside, and stumbled back to Pug, mumbling how he'd teach him that he's not a man to snuff. He crossed the threshold, clutching the gun in his love-hate tattooed hands, unloaded both barrels in the jukebox while dreaming of foreign lands. Plastic shattered, drunk scattered pipe pots at the floor. The barmaid screamed, the exit teams, with patrons crushed for the door. Number nine, nine, nine. The police were called. Neighbours who'd heard it were scared and appalled. But no one was surprised when they took him away. Because for Keith the greasy butcher, it was just an average sort of day. <laughs> they talk funny in Chester, have you ever noticed that? Buds, buds, it's ski. Shot, that's a nice shot. Like, hey up, yoth. Where they from? Tizel. Sheep shagger, eh? <laughs> Didn't seem to matter where I went, I was a sheep shagger. I don't know. But most especially in Liverpool. When I moved up to Liverpool, I was barely just 18. A boarding house in Waterloo where the landlady played the Queen. Me roommate were a wanker, his mother's pride and joy. He wouldn't put it down, he were a bloody clown. It was his favourite and only toy. The place nearly drove me crazy with that old bag landlady, treating me like her least favourite son. Till I told her to bollocks in an alcoholic frolic and I moved in downtown with Joe Mallon. Joe! He were a wild one from the county Monaghan. Took the boat to Liverpool to become a learned man. He worked hard at his drinking, but his studies went awry. He spent every night on Upper Parliament Street watching the slags walk by. But me and Joe, we were ripe for fun. We'd give anything a try. The flat were like an open trap. Nothing could get by. It were me and Joe, a team with a scheme, a monster of many parts. We drank, we stank, we lit up farts. We brought home huge exotic tarts. Living in Liverpool, running rife, swimming with the tide in the pool of life. Yates's wine lodge on a Saturday night, at Upper Parliament Street for a drink, dance and a fight. Liverpool Lime Street on a Saturday night, you know, there's always some drunken bastard looking for a fight. Kids, in the mill, from, kids from the mill towns on the run. Playing in the arcades and thinking they've won. I had a, a 
sort of a serious one to do. You have to have at least one serious one, don't you? So here it is. Uh, my uncle, my uncle Ted. Uh, he had the misfortune to be born around here in the 19, uh, ooh, turn of the century. That's uh, Cresbrook over there, on the top of the hill. Down the bottom you can see Cresbrook Mill. That's where Ted worked, the mill. Cresbrook's where he was born and lived uh, just about his entire life. Uh, what can you say about Ted, really? Uh, born in Cresbrook to a very large family, I don't remember the number, something like between 11 and 13 kids or something like that. Ted, the sensitive one in the family, the artistic one. Also the wayward son. Then again, some of his brothers were wayward. Several of them emigrated to different parts of the planet. Ted's waywardness uh, manifested itself in a different way. Ted didn't find any of the Cresbrook girls attractive. And you might say, well, nothing's changed. But no, he found the boys attractive. And you can only imagine I can only imagine that in Cresbrook, at the earliest part of this century, that was probably not a very comfortable situation to be in. Finding uh, like-minded uh, members of the Cresbrook community was probably a bit dodgy at best, if there were any at all. And there certainly uh, must have been some that were not like-minded because uh, poor old Ted ended up in Wakefield Prison for a number of years. Though. Uh, Popular wisdom has it that he, he, he found Wakefield Prison a lot more uh, tolerable than life in uh, either the mill or Cresbrook. I suppose it makes sense really, locked up with a bunch of blokes. Uh. Anyway, he did his time there and uh, returned to Cresbrook after, as he used to put it euphemistically, serving his time, no not serving his time, uh, working for His Majesty. He returned to Cresbrook and was basically told, we'll have none of that silliness round here. If they're going to stay round Cresbrook, lad, you better straighten up and uh, set the barrow straight. And they gave him uh, one option, leave or stay, work at the mill and marry the local wallflower, who uh, was a lovely woman by the name of Ginny. I mean, lovely in the sense that she was, uh, she put up with Ted for about 50 years or so. And, uh, as I say, he was born there, lived there most of his life until he burnt his house down. Ended up old folks' home in Bakel. And, uh, he used to roam these valleys on a regular basis after he'd retired. It was his only, uh, solace, really, I suppose. Ted roamed the valley with his Jack Russell dog, his mind lost in thoughts of youth, love, and God. His days in the mill at long last over. Now he grieved for a time, a faded glover. He did time in jail on His Majesty's remand. But his prison was the mill and his marriage by demand. Freedom was the valley where he dream and loose his mind. Write words of hope to a life he couldn't find. He dreamed of Oxford's halls when privileged minds ran free while he told the line for his crime no sympathy. England's green and pleasant land, a tonic for his ills, could not erase the misery of the dark satanic mill. Wakefield prison for a six year stay was just an installment on the price he'd pay. His future was the price for his shameful vice while he served out his time with his life on ice. Hills of the north rejoice, river and mountain spring 
Hark to the advance voice, valley and lowland sing. No, I'm going to switch gear a bit here, and you might think this is a bit strange and a bit out of season, and you'll be quite correct. But it's a story so dear to my tidal heart that I just have to deliver it this evening. Hands up, those of you from Tidza, those atheist, pagan, non-Christians who used to go to Tidal Church on Christmas Eve. Absolutely rat arse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank God for that. Yes! Well, in that case, you'll understand this next little story. I'm going to attempt to sing it to you, because without giving it that real Christmas flavour, it just doesn't quite have the same carry through, you know. Hey, shut up back there. This is a, a solemn song of faith, hope, and something else. It was midnight mass on Christmas Eve. I swayed in the pews thinking maybe I should leave. Off went Nigel, he was feeling some distress. He thought that I should leave as well before I made a mess. But suddenly I felt better. After all, it's Christmas Eve. And it's only a matter of willpower, whether or not you heed. The trill of the carols and the sight of the pretty tree were making this a close to perfect evening for me. The pubs were closed, it were well after time. So the only drink I'd get was that sacramental wine. So it seemed a good idea to put me mind to work at closing up me glottis and consume that Christian perk. Praise Allah, I'm a Christian, cause it's molten hops for me. Thank God I'm not a Muslim with no whiskey in me tea. Just then things started spinning clockwise and rivers and the feeling in me belly well it grew from bad to worse the problem swelled inside me till it broke the gates of hell i filled me great coat pockets and inside my lapel praise allah i'm a christian cause it's molten hops for me Thank God I'm not a Muslim with no whiskey in me tea. Well, I thought I'd finished puking, my judgment somewhat dulled, when once again I ruptured and the pew in front were filled. <laughs> the family were the Robinsons and Mummy got the worst. Her fur coat took the first blast and the rest went in her purse. I'm sorry, Mrs. Robinson, but Jesus loves you more than I can tell you. <laughs> Praise Allah, I'm a Christian, cause it's molten hops for me. Thank God I'm not a Muslim with no whiskey in me. And uh, there's one bloke I always remember, and I wish he was here tonight, but I don't see him. Because he taught me so much. He taught, I worked with him for, oh, God, about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like 15 years, but he taught me so much in that time. And there's always one thing I'll remember. I'll never forget what he used to say to me in the morning when I'd show up at Laporte Industries to dig. He'd go, well, Neville was the shawl man. <laughs> Neville was the shovel man. He'd dig from dawn to dusk, sweating out the beer he drank with that awful heathen lust. 
No ordinary man could do this job, for sure his back would break. But Neville just kept digging like some hell-bound dog at the rake. In the pubs his name was currency, no money need change hands. His credit as solid as Her Majesty's lead that he dug from beneath the land. Now Neville could drink and Neville could fight. And if he touched his pint, it was the end of your fucking night. Mind, it weren't through malice that he'd belt you in the gob. Just a harsh set of rules of a man with a hard job. He'd put the shovel to the rubble from the moment he'd arrive, digging at that muck with his beer fuel drive, sweating out the night before and whistling to the beat of a heart that pounded to the strain of his alcoholic heat. Neville was the shovel man. He'd dig from dawn to dusk, sweating out the beer he drank with that awful heathen lust. Yeah.